1985, I was in uh, Paris, and at that time, uh, CMU had a really great reputation. It was probably both to, due to robotics and uh, computer science and engineering. And in addition, uh, Pittsburgh at that time was the most livable city, and uh, it is still. So I think these uh, were main attractions, not only for me, but also for my family. What were my dreams when I came to CMU? This was, as I mentioned, 24 years ago, so many things didn't exist. You know, you, we didn't have a, a fancy uh, iPhones or iPods or, or uh, you know, digital cameras and many others. So I think that uh, 24 years is a quarter of century. It's a really a time that uh, sometimes uh, dreams were born during the time I was here. And I think that uh, this is really what uh, has to be done, that you you adjust yourself in some sense to whatever uh, challenges are facing our society and uh, you, you learn things and you try to solve them uh, tomorrow. So I mean, what we do, we do polymer science or polymer chemistry or polymer synthesis. And in order to understand it a little bit better, you have to realize uh, the importance of, of polymers in some sense. So polymers are uh, part of us. We are, in fact, 80% of water, and the rest is polymers, proteins, nucleic acids, or carbohydrates. And polymers are everywhere. So uh, synthetic polymers would be plastics, rubbers, uh, fibers, very thin films, and many others. So uh, in fact, what we do, we do radical polymerization, and this is a process which makes approximately 50% of all polymers. It's a very, in fact, difficult to be controlled process because the polymer chains, it grows within a one second time and it adds monomer units, so like small parts to a chain within a frequency of one millisecond more or less. And then after one second, these chains die, but sometimes they can also transfer, so they have an offspring in some sense. And the problem is that this life of propagating chain is only one second. So it behaves nearly like human being because it grows, it was born, and then it dies. But this happens at a time which is 100 million times faster than our lifetime. So it's very difficult to be controlled. So what we do, very often we try to extend this one second life to something like a day or maybe a couple hours. And this is really a challenge in how to do it. So we take this one second life of propagated chain and then chop it on thousand pieces, one millisecond each, and insert one minute time in between every one millisecond. So this one second is thousand milliseconds plus thousand minutes, so it's a day more or less. So, of course, if you do that, you have to understand somehow uh, what to do with it. Should we do catalyst? How much this catalyst? How little this catalyst? And one of the recent advances which we did was really reducing the amount of catalyst by a factor of thousands, so essentially parts per million only of the catalyst, and using some environmentally friendly reducing agents like vitamin C or ascorbic acid, things like that. So this is one part of what we do. The other one is really engineering macromolecules of this polymer chain, making them with different shapes, stars, sometimes complex structures, sometimes very specific uh, uh, self-organizing molecules. So this is really something which allows to these chains, which are made by, by uh, our group, essentially, by uh, many of our colleagues in the world, to self-assembly to some nanostructured morphology. So this is really enabling, in some sense, nanotechnology. But there are also many potential applications for polymers which become maybe intelligent or smart, which can respond to environment, which can contract or expand, which can toughen or sometimes get harder or softer, and eventually it can go even to some interactive materials, so materials which will be potentially functioning, but functioning in a very responsive and interactive way, maybe like drug deliveries, which would be targeting a particular part, but also delivering drug only when it is needed, on a demand in some sense when our organism would need that. So I think that this is uh, probably what, what we try to do is is to make them uh, on one side uh, less expensively, but also more precisely, and aiming at some new uh, potential applications as well. And I, I think that uh, you cannot plan research, you cannot plan inventions. I mean, sometimes you uh, have a dream at night at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., and you know, just you you have to be obsessed in some sense with it. But at the same time, you have to have a passion, and I think. 
uh, things which I try to teach my, my students in my group that they have to be really passionate about what they do and if they do then they have a very good feedback and it really boosts their activity and uh, increases their both productivity and their uh, uh, activities.